Good morning, friends in Christ. It is Friday morning on this St. Patrick's Day. And we're glad that you're joining us for our Mount Olive Live Facebook devotions here at 9 a.m. Later will be posted to our Mount Olive YouTube channel. And whether you're joining us live or you're joining us later on this St. Patrick's Day, we are just glad that you are joining us as we continue to go through the Word of God together in these devotions, as we invest in our relationship with the Lord and also with each other. As we are in the season of Lent, we are focused on doing Lenten devotions. And a lot of our Lenten devotions this year have come from the minor prophets in the Old Testament. Minor prophets doesn't mean they're not as important as the major prophets. It just means the books are smaller. And their message is very much similar. And that is the call for the people of God to repent and to turn back to the Lord. And the season of Lent is all about that. It's all about repentance. It's a change of mind. It's a change of heart. It's a change of direction. As every day we know the gravitational pull exists to pull us away from the Lord and more towards ourselves and the world. But every day we're called to deny ourselves, to take up our cross and follow Jesus. And so every day we have to be vigilant and intentional on this uphill climb of following Jesus to make sure we're always turning towards the Lord. And what we saw yesterday in Jonah chapter 1 was that Jonah turned the opposite direction of the Lord. The Lord said to go to Nineveh. Jonah hates Nineveh. He doesn't like the people of Nineveh. The people of Nineveh are wicked and they have been evil to God's people Israel. And so, so when God says, Jonah, you got to go to Nineveh, he buys a ticket to board a ship to go in the opposite direction. The farthest place that he could go in the opposite direction of Tarshish. And so we saw what happened to him of the casting of lots in Jonah chapter one, and Jonah was thrown overboard. And he is there in the waters, and he thinks he's going to drown to death. He thinks he's gonna die. But then in Jonah chapter one, the last verse there, verse 17, God rescues Jonah by sending a great large fish as he's drowning in the sea that comes and swallows him. And he finds himself in the belly of this huge fish for three days and three nights. And that leads us to Jonah chapter two. And so go ahead and get out your Bibles this morning. Let's turn to Jonah chapter two. As we see Jonah's prayer, from a deep, dark place. And the deep, dark place is the belly of a huge fish for three days and three nights. It's not the place where Jonah wants to be. He thought he was going to die. He wanted to die. But God rescued him and is delivering him because God has a plan and a purpose for him. Just as God has a plan and a purpose for you and for me. He decides when we're born. He also decides when it's time for us to be called to heaven and that life is sacred. And even though Jonah doesn't feel like it, his life is still sacred too. And God is going to fulfill what he called Jonah to do. And so we see his prayer from a deep, dark place of his distress in Jonah chapter 2. Then Jonah prayed to the Lord his God from the belly of the fish, saying, I called out to the Lord out of my distress, and he answered me. Out of the belly of Sheol I cried, and you heard my voice. The belly of Sheol. Sheol in the Old Testament is the place of the dead. It's the place of the grave. And so Jonah is saying, I was there drowning at sea. I thought I was going to die, but God rescued me out of my distress in my deepest, darkest place. I find myself in the belly of Sheol, in the belly of the grave, the bottomless pit of the stomach of this huge, large fish. 
He's at his lowest of lows. And yet, what does he say? I cried out to the Lord in my distress, and he answered me. He answered my prayer when I was at my lowest of lows. We see the faithfulness of Yahweh, the faithfulness of our God, that he hears our prayers. He invites us to pray, and that he answers our prayer. Sometimes those answered prayers might be a yes, it might be a no, it may be maybe later, but he knows what is best. But what we do know is he hears us and that he answers us. Verse 3, For you cast me into the deep, into the heart of the seas, and the flood surrounded me. All your waves and your billows passed over me. He's saying that God was up to something. That there on the ship, when I just wanted to die and I wanted them to just throw me overboard so the storm would stop because I didn't want to cost them their life. I knew it was my fault. I thought I was going to drown. I thought I was going to die. But yet, when the waves and the water was overtaking me, God rescued me. Even when the waters were over my head and I was drowning in the sea, thinking that I was going to die. God acted. He delivered me. <clears throat> Verse 4. Then I said, I am driven away from, from your sight, yet I shall again look upon your holy temple. He was focused on his death. He was focused on drowning. The last thing that he was seeing was the Lord. He was seeing the direct opposite. The Lord was the farthest thing from his sight, yet... He was remembered, remembered by the Lord. The Lord remembers his children, and he's faithful to them. Now, in the season of Lent, as we follow Jesus to the cross, this kind of reminds us of Good Friday, when Jesus cries out on the cross, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? It's like the Father has turned his back on his one and only Son on the cross, and there, in his pain and his agony and in his loneliness, he is feeling and experiencing, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? We also know that he's quoting a psalm there, Jesus is. And so that this was God's will to happen for the Savior, the Messiah of the world, to suffer and to die. But it was still excruciating. And he was still experiencing this loneliness of the Father turning his back and being out of sight. And that's what Jonah is saying. He's saying, I was headed towards death. I couldn't see the Lord, but the Lord remembered me. And that I will look again upon your holy temple. Look at verse 5. The waters closed in over me to take my life. The deep surrounded me. Weeds were wrapped about my head at the roots of the mountains. I went down to the land whose bars closed upon me forever. Yet you brought me up my life from the pit. O Lord, my God. He says, I was drowning. I was in the deep depths of the sea. Weeds are all around me. It was like I was in the prison bars of death. And yet there in a place of death, God rescued him and delivered him from the pit of life. Have you ever been there in the pits of life where you've fallen into the pit? You're at your lowest of lows. Your emotions, your feelings, your thoughts, they're all over the place. Some of them make sense. Some of them do not. And some of them are headed to a deep, dark place. Your thoughts, your feelings, and your emotions. And in the midst of your deep distress, maybe you remembered God, maybe you didn't. But you were just hurting and you were alone and you were thinking you're going to die. And maybe it's a spiritual death even. And yet in the midst of it, God answers his prayer. And he remembers his child. And he rescues and delivers him. Jonah, does he deserve life? Not really. He abandoned God. He went the opposite direction. He's rebelling against God. He's running away from God. He really de deserves death. But God gives him life. Verse 7, when my life was fainting away, I remembered the Lord and my prayer came to you into your holy temple. He remembers the Lord 
and he prays, and he prays this psalm. Some of these words are psalms. How would Jonah know these words? He didn't have the psalms right there in written portions for him in the belly of the fish. He has them memorized. It's why one of the spiritual disciplines is to memorize scripture. So that when we're in the pit, we're in a deep, dark place. We don't have the word in God in front of us. We've memorized it right here. And so he prays that prayer in his distress, memorized the words of the Lord. He remembers his relationship with God because God remembers him and God rescues him. I love what Luther, the founder of our faith, the great reformer of the 1500 says about this. He says, first, God grants grace and spirit to cheer the heart. He reminds it of God's mercy, dismissing thoughts, touching on God's wrath, turning the heart from God, the judge, to God, the father, the father who loves his child and has his child's best interests at heart. But this does not lie in the power of man. For Jonah says here that his soul fainted within him and that faint heartedness was the strength and power of his soul. But the fact that he thinks about himself and begins to have faith is not the work of his soul. It's the work of God's Holy Spirit, Luther says. The Spirit and no one else can bring the Lord to mind. And when it comes to pass that the heart is reminded of the Lord, a new light flares up, Luther says. Life again raises its head as life is brought forth from death, and the heart is emboldened to cry in supplication, prayer, supplication, praising the Lord, and thus its petition, its request, also surely finds a listening ear that in the pit of distress and his lowest of lows, Jonah prays. And God, instead of giving him what his sins deserves, a judgment and wrath gives him life. And he answers his prayer. And it wasn't Jonah who turned to the Lord. No, it's the Lord who continues to turn to him. And how did he remember the Lord? Because the Lord is delivering him. And the Holy Spirit is then pointing Jonah back to the Lord. The Bible says no one can say Jesus is Lord except by the power of the, you guessed it, the Holy Spirit. And he goes on to say in verse 8, Those who pay regard to vain idols forsake their hope of steadfast love. When we are loving idols and other gods and we're putting other things before the Lord, we're loving them, we're not loving God. And we place them in a place as a priority above God. And that's dangerous place to be, forsaking the Lord. Goes on to say, verse 9, But I, with the voice of thanksgiving, will sacrifice to you. What I have vowed I will pay. Salvation belongs to the Lord. What can a dead person do in their sins to bring life? Absolutely nothing. They're dead. Can't do anything. But God is the resurrection and the life. He's the one who can bring life. And that is what Jonah is saying. Salvation belongs to the Lord and to the Lord alone. It's why Jesus came down from heaven to do for us what we couldn't do for ourselves. While we were dead in our sins, he took our place on the cross and gave us victory. And that's a great remembrance for us in this season of Lent. And the Lord spoke to the fish and it vomited Jonah out upon the dry land. God rescues and delivers Jonah from the drowning sea and from the belly of the fish as Jonah is then barfed out of the fish and lands upon dry sea. Now he's already had these weeds and all these things around him. Now that he has been covered with vomit, we can only imagine what he looks like, what he smells like, but he is alive and he is on dry land. The storm is over. He's out of the pit of the belly of the fish. He's out of the bottom of the drowning sea. And he is alive because of Yahweh. Yahweh rescued him and delivered him. And he has a plan and a purpose for Jonah's life because he has called him to be a part of his mission to go to Nineveh and to preach and to tell the people of Nineveh to turn from their wicked, evil ways. And God's going to fulfill that mission. And so on this day, we remember 
that even when we're at our lowest of lows, we pray to the Lord and the Lord remembers us. And that is why Jesus died and rose for us because in the Lord, we have victory and we have life and salvation is in the Lord alone. Friends in Christ, on the St. Patrick's Day, we bow our heads to pray. Heavenly Father, Lord, we are truly thankful for your word today as we learn a lot in the life of Jonah. And as he prayed, we see your heart, your compassion, your mercy, and that you answer the prayers of your children and that you bring life and that you are the one that rescues us from the bottomless pits of life. And in our distress, we cry out to you knowing that you are faithful. You've been faithful in the past, you've been faithful today, and you'll be faithful in the future as you have proven your faithfulness to us through our Savior, Jesus Christ, the one who is our rock, our redeemer, and strength, the one who is the way, the truth, and the life. And all God's people said, Amen. Friends in Christ, have a blessed St. Patrick's Day today, and we will see you in church on Sunday. Worship at 8, 9, and 1030. If you are traveling for spring break, you can worship with us online Sunday, 9 a.m. on the Mount Olive YouTube channel or Mount Olive Facebook. If you're in town, we want to see you at church on Sunday as we continue to grow in our relationship with the Lord. Have a blessed Friday.